Welcome back. This is the third video of the four we're going to do related to the intensity of color and where the most in intense shade of a given color is placed in relationship to an object that is overall that color. For example, we already painted this apple in the first video and overall it's within the hue family of red. And we see that up close to the highlights, we start tinting the red with white, yellow, orange maybe, but in any event, we're neutralizing that pure red and altering it. And so it becomes less pure, less uh, rich with the chroma of that red. Whereas down here, just above this dark tangent of shadow as we transfer from the light side of the apple to the dark side of the apple, the, sh the light versus the shaded side of the apple. That's where, just above that shadow, is where the most intense, pure, beautiful red is going to be. And on the yellow, the most intense is going to be closer to the light, right up close to where the white is. It's going to be the most pure, intense, chromatic yellow. And as we move away from that, then we start getting into these other tones that neutralize the yellow's intensity so that it becomes these other shades and not intense yellow. So our purpose is to discuss where the most intensity is in relationship to value on given objects in different colors. So here's that chart that we showed previously. So red is just below the middle of the value scale. So it's on the darker side of this value scale, whereas the yellow is right up here at the light. So just as we discussed. Now we're gonna do blue and it's back down here. It's very like the red, just above the tangent of shadow, the separation of light and shadow on an object. So that's what we're going to demonstrate now. So I'll zoom in and we'll do a little demo painting a blue pear. We'll start this little painting of this pear by using a piece of fine charcoal and doing a little bit of a layout here. So get it in, it'll right. Oh good, here we go. All right, let's save. Let's take this pear up to here. Let's see, it's kind of an interesting chubby little thing. Take it over onto that side. Narrow it down there, maybe. Put a stem on it. Again, we're going to have our light coming from this direction, as we have with the other two little paintings for this sill series. And we'll have it have a shadow over there. So that should do. All right. And again, we're going to use this number four. Uh, Filbert style brush. All right, now it's going to seem odd. We're looking at a kind of a pale yellowish sort of pear that's <laughs> bruising and changing. It's going to taste really good after this painting. Uh, but we're going to paint it blue because we're just going to see what blue, how we deal with blue and where it's most intense. So again, with the light coming this way, we're going to uh, amplify the idea of where the shadows are on this pear shape. So we've got some ultramarine blue here and some cobalt blue here. Let's uh, start with a little cobalt blue. Push that down against the palette a little better. And come across here maybe on this side. These uh, panels the paint slides around on them and you see the strokes of the brush. See, I'll show you right here. See how it goes like that if you don't get the paint thick enough. So we end up putting the paint on maybe a little thicker, thicker than we may have due to wanting it to cover the surface. So this blue here, this cobalt blue will work pretty well for coming back into for our reflected light down in here, this section of the pear. So kind of weird looking at having a blue pear when we're looking at that. So let's take some of this ultramarine blue and 
try to get our tangent shadow built out of that. So there we go. Now the intensity of this really warm blue, these are pretty much both warms, but this one's more warm because it's got, it's leaning more towards the red on the color wheel. So we're gonna have to go darker down in here and dis displace some of this, uh, the beauty of this, this uh, really pure blue. So I just have some raw umber over here. It's a nice tone uh, color to tone things down with. So we'll take some of this um, ultramarine blue and put some, I didn't need that much, did I? Anyway, that'll give us a color that's not so pure for our shadow. Now you can see we're not gonna have anywhere near this dark of shadows on an actual pair, but our purpose is to imply where the pure colors are. So we want to be able to have some pure colors and not have them diluted or neutralized by white. However, if we say, what's, what's the uh, complementary color to blue? It's orange, right? So we're going to take some orange and we can put some of that down in here and pull some blue into that and look at what we're going to get. See this sort of a brownish tone. And we can come up the side of this pair with a little bit of that on the shady side of our pair. Oops. Yeah, well, that's pretty dark. So we're going to have to play with that, aren't we? So let's add some white to that, get some more orange into it. We're going to take it away from the blue a little bit and just get some different values on this pair. We can't have everything dark or we're not going to have any form. This uh, blue and orange typically complement each other pretty well. Okay, it definitely is looking weird for a pair. So we can take um, uh, some, let's see, what can we do to get some lighter blue involved here since this is supposed to be a blue pair and not a orange or tan pair, so blues lose their intensity mighty quick when you start putting white into them. Uh, you might really like a pale blue as far as taste is concerned, but see here some more pure um, white, uh, lighter blue, not having the brown mixed into it. So this is going to get a little challenging, isn't it? Having the blue color and our mind saying pear and looking and our eyes seeing blue or, or yellow here with this pear. So we've kind of wiped out the, the purity of that intense color that we're, the whole purpose of this painting is to demonstrate. So we're going to pull some of this straight cobalt back into this scene here. and mess it in with that ultramarine a little bit and pull it up into these tones. So we can try to establish some form based on light and shadow. We've kind of flattened the whole thing out, haven't we? See how this pair is, goes down to here, but then it bulges out. This is full bodied, whereas I've got it not looking like that. So let's see what we can do about that. Maybe we can get some of this pure color back up a little further, the cobalt that is, and bring it down into here off this top of the pair. Hard to look at this and think pear. It's just, I'm you know, just getting some of this off with my paper towel. All right, let's come back in with some ultramarine. Help cause the intensity of pure color to take part in this painting about intensity and pure color. 
Okay. Wow, it's kind of interesting to be completely corrupting of a given object and what you know it's supposed to look like by changing its color, let alone the fact that very few foods are blue, so we tend to not... <laughs> it doesn't make our mouths water to have some blue pear uh, or blue anything that's edible, almost anything. Well, we may not have a pear that we like very much when we're done with this, but we're going to take a little bit of dark down here because by the time we get to painting shadows on the ground, we're going to need to have it connect to the ground here some. All right, so this is too pure down here. We're getting too much light here. We could use maybe a little more of this cobalt blue coming into this area. It's just easy to neutralize it and diffuse it as far as its, its loveliness because there's already so much paint that it picks up every time I make a brush stroke. So we can just put it on heavier as long as we don't make a second stroke and drag the bottom layer back up into it. But that's exactly what I'm doing. So that's where we want these pure colors, is just above where it drops into that lower shadow area. Okay, so we can maybe pull some light into an area like that to give some form to this pair. You just see that this bulges out a little bit, catches some light there. All right, so mm -hmm. let's take some of this cobalt again and add some raw umber to it. Add a little white, not too much, just so we can pollute these colors a little bit and get rid of the intensity that I've got in this quote unquote cast shadow or uh, reflected light. Kind of interesting, I guess. Got to get some of this paint back off my brush so I can have a little bit of semblance of control of what I'm doing onto this surface. So it gets kind of white down in here as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of white into this color and pull this around here a little bit. Now I want to. Um, tag into this blue here, but not with too much of this color on it, or this cobalt's going to just take off again into being messed up. So I'll just bring a little bit of that in to there. Try to give form of a shelf, sort of the, the bulge of that, which lets light catch onto it. And take a little more cobalt into this area. It's starting to look a little better. At least we're getting the idea of form in here. So, all right. Let's get some of this cobalt with a little bit of this brown and see if we can't create some semblance of something that makes sense with this top of this pair. All right, I started painting it, and then I painted a little too much, so I need to come back in and start again with that, that bit. And we could go a little darker there, back in there, just behind the stem. Then we'll bring the stem back on top of it. Something like that. And then bring in this bit of blue here and create these little bumpy shapes at the top of the pair. So 
Again, it just sort of looks weird, but I'm going to take some of this tan out with a little more blue tones to it. A little more than that. Kind of odd, isn't it? All right, now let's get a stem on here. Let's see, what color can we use? Maybe some romber again. Maybe we could burn it, push into this dried over burnt sienna, pull some of that warm color out. Add a little white to that, to that. Ooh, that looking all right? Ooh, it's getting kind of close. It's in the right neighborhood anyway. Just give it a stem. Let's give it a dark side of dark side of the stem instead of the dark side of the moon. All right, there's a little bit of something that almost makes sense there. We'll lighten this up a bit and pull it onto this side. Looks like we can do something darker right on the top of there. So we'll do that. It kind of looks like a stem. So overall, it kind of looks like a pear. I mean, if we're gonna be nice to ourselves, maybe we could bring in a little more blue here. It's like we're seeing a little bit of color right there. So we can pull in a little bit maybe right there. Give it some interest. I suppose we could play with it a little bit and make it appear that it's got some of these more naturalistic sort of bruises that pears tend to get so easily. Let's do it with this color. Yeah, it's not really helping much. Okay, so we've got our intense blue here, right here on the, uh, just above the tangent of the shadow where the light side of the pair separates from the dark side of the pair. Add a little bit more light there. And then we could make that tangent a little bit more noticeable if we wanted to, but we're just gonna add some more of this mix of ultramarine and cobalt to get that definite uh, intense band of color at that part of the value shifts in in a blue object let's see we can maybe take a little bit more of that and bring it down this side so on a grayscale we have light to dark, light to dark on this, and when the when the light starts giving way to dark, that's where we have our intense blue. Then it gives more way to it until we have some reflected light coming back from the the ground, whatever it is, onto this um, lower portion of the pair. We're going to lighten that up just a little bit more. I went maybe too far. So we'll just mix it in with the other colors that are already under what I just put on. All right, so now it's more as though we have this shadow tangent line ref reflected light. We could come in with a little uh, darker bit so it's not the same all the way across. Make it a little more interesting. Okay. So we have a blue pair. All right, for now we're done with the blue pair and we will continue in our series with the next video with a green pepper. So please subscribe, make comments, share with your friends. We're gonna do a good study here on intensity of color and then we'll move on to the color that shadow should be in another video along with some other color videos. 
we're going to cover some good material. All the best to you.